G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, when you're in a metal work and making stuff, you're going to accumulate lots of steel over the years. I mean, you never throw anything out because all this stuff's all handy. You know, it might be just what you want for a job. So I must probably have a half a ton of steel under the bench and I've got more, you know, stock out the back and it just accumulates and you don't know what you've got. I mean, it, it could be anything. I mean, look at that. That's a it's a head bolt off of a tractor. I mean, you know, is it any good? Well, <laughs> yeah, it is, but I mean, it's case hardened, so you've got to take the case hardening off. So, you know, there's a lot of factors come into play. Then you've got rebar. I mean, that's, you can machine it, but it's not the greatest steel in the world. And here's some good steel. You know, I've made a crank shaft up for an old two stroke motor, and that's probably good steel, but, you know, you've got all this stuff and you don't know what it is. You don't know, you know, whether it's hard or soft, whether it can be machined easily or not. Well, say right up front, hardness and softness versus machinability, they don't relate because, I mean, you can machine aluminium, which is soft, and get a beautiful finish. But then if you try and say machine really soft, mild steel, you can get a terrible finish, you know. But, anyway, uh, the hardness factor comes down to whether you're able to, say, cut a thread, tap a thread in it afterwards. You know, um, I mean, it's no good machining something up and then finally you can't cut a thread in it to put screws in, you know. It, uh, even after annealing, you know, some steel is just so hard. The carbon content is so high. So anyway, in this video I'll just show you a few basic um, tests you can do to check the hardness. Righto, well here's some pieces of steel I've just grabbed randomly out of the the heap, there's an axle off of an old uh, cart or something. There's um, some steel turned down from a drag link off of my old truck. There's, there's some round stock that is of unknown uh, origin. Board to the scrap guard. Another piece of unknown steel. And another piece of unknown steel that looks like an axle shaft that's got a bend in it down the end, so, yep, you know, that's what that is. So we'll test them. So, I'll show you the tests. Test number one, coming up. Right, the one that most people go for is the old try a file on the test and just see how well it files. Well, that's a, it's one way of doing it, but we'll try it. I've never found this to be a very good test at all. Pretty inconclusive. Pretty inconclusive. I just find that the file thing does, doesn't really work for me. The file just doesn't do enough. I mean, you just can't gauge. I mean, they're all getting a little nick in them, but as far as I'm concerned, the old file test is pretty bloody useless. So we'll go on to the next test. Right, the next test is the most basic. Hit it with a hammer. A ball peen hammer. And yeah, you can see it dented it. So that's pretty soft. Try this bit. Yeah, it dented it, but nowhere near as much. Try and keep your strokes the same. So if you compare those two, you can see that's got a much bigger depression than that one. And I know up front this is actually harder than this, so that's working all right. We'll try this. Now that rang, you could hear the sound that made, that sounded harder and basically it didn't put hardly any depression in that at all, so I know that's hard. This stuff. Soft, you can see that, it's got a this stuff hard once again you can hear the way it rings so hitting it with a hammer it'll you know gives you those two factors how much depression you get and also the way it rings you if it rings more sharply uh, more intensely you know it's harder the softer stuff will just go bop whereas the uh, the harder stuff will go ding, make a nice ringing now and always. So that's a good test. 
All right, so there is just a basic hammer, ball peen, works pretty well. Right, next test. We'll go a bit more scientific. Now, with the uh, metal testers, I mean, you know, there are hardness testers that you can, but they're obviously using laboratories and that. And the way they work is basically they they apply a, cons uh, a repeatable impact uh, point onto uh, a metal surface and then they uh, basically show the deflection and uh, impression uh, in the article as I, as I understand it. Now obviously, you know, the backyard is not going to have a hardness tester unless he's got plenty of money. But one thing you can use, which will give you a good idea, is one of these. Now this is a... I'll roll this down so it comes in the camera. This is just one of those pin punches that you can use, which are really good, that basically are uh, uh, automatic. You just push down and they release at a, at a set pressure. So these actually are sort of a, you could say a very, 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 very basic primitive form of hardness tester. I mean, if you were to use a center punch and a hammer and hit it, you, you wouldn't get a consistent result. Whereas one of these you will because it will load to the same pressure and release at the same point. So if you put it on the end or, you know, somewhere on your piece of steel and then just check to see how easily it's gone in That'll give you an idea of the hardness. I mean, it's going to be hard for you to see. I'll come in closer on this and we'll do a bunch of things and just see the variation. Okay, the variation's not going to be huge, but, you know, it gives you a pretty good idea. I found this to be quite handy. All right, we'll try it in the stuff. Now, that didn't go in very hard, very far at all. I know this is pretty hard stuff. This is the old drag link. So you can see that the, the impression it made there is quite small and uh, so we say that's that's good hard stuff this one it went in a lot more so that's definitely softer so if we say compare these if you can see it where is it there or there there, I think. Yeah, there, you can see that's gone in a lot more than that one. So that's a lot softer than this. We'll get the old axle end. And that's about the same as... Now, it's a bit softer than this, so this is, this is still your harder one. All right, let's try... This one, which seems to be the way it rings, I reckon this is pretty hard stuff. Try this one. Oh, look at that. Virtually didn't go in hardly anything. Look at that. So, pretty good test. I mean, it's basic, but it gives you a pretty good idea, and uh, it's a consistent um, application, you know? So, yeah, these work good. And even if you don't use it for metal testing, these are a great little punch to line stuff up, you know, you can just start them off and then finish off with a heavier punch once you've got your initial mark. But yeah, so that's one way of doing it. Okay, next test. This is one I saw on the internet where you basically follow the bouncing ball, the bouncing steel ball, where you get a ball bearing and you get a tube that it can go up and down in. The theory is that the harder metal when you drop the ball down the tube, the harder metal will make the ball bounce up and down uh, more often, you know, be more sort of uh, deflection over a longer period of time. So you get repeatable bounces, bigger bounces, and on the soft stuff, it sort of just goes down and bounces less, you know, just goes plop, basically. I've tried it, I don't think it's all that wonderful. It's uh, well, not all that consistent I've found, so we'll put a bit of soft stuff and put it in. 
We'll drop our ball down. I mean, you spend a lot of time chasing the ball, bearing around the floor, actually, but... Uh, OK, you heard that. Now we're trying to hard stuff. Pick the difference. Mm, maybe. Yeah, that sounded harder. But I know that this and this are harder than that, so. Okay, some people can say, oh, Bob, you know, you should be doing it on the flat because it's, you know, a rounded surface. No, okay, you do it on the flat. Try it on this. You know, mm, for practical use, I mean, you know, I'm not very impressed. You know, mm, it looks better, but it's... Uh, pretty ordinary test, I think, so I, uh, I, I wouldn't use that one myself. All right, moving right along. Right, the spark test always gets dragged out when you talk about hardness, and that is basically the principle is that the more carbon in the steel, the harder it will be, and the more carbon in the steel, the more the spark will fly and the colour will change. Um, instead of being a red spark, I go to a white spark. Stuff like that. I personally have never used this method either. I just find, you know, hitting it with a hammer or using a pin punch is really your best bet. But anyway, we'll do the spark test just to show you how it works in action. So we get some steel. All right, we'll make some sparks. Now this is the hard stuff. We'll use the dodgy end. Sparks. Not much difference. Once again, not much difference. Soft stuff. You know, I don't see a lot in this as far as usability. Okay, it made lots of sparks, but they didn't look much different to me. So, as far as not with metals within the machinability range, and all these metals are machinable. I mean, if you would say put a, uh, a hard, high carbon shaft on this that was say uh, a gearbox lay shaft out of out of, a, out of out of a gearbox, that steel you would never ever use for machining or a pin punch or anything because it's so hard and uh, it is potentially brittle. But if you were to put that on here, you would see a big difference in the sparking because the sparks would be flying everywhere and they'd be really bright and, yeah, different sort of spark. But where you've got all these metals which are basically in a you know, close proximity, um, yeah, you're not going to see a big deal of difference. So spark test, no, nah, it doesn't rate very highly as far as I'm concerned. So let's have a wrap up. Well, as far as I'm concerned, there's only two methods that are really are worth using, and that is the little pin punch. That works pretty damn well. That works pretty well. It's, it's quite reliable. And they hit it with a ball peen hammer method. That works damn well because, you know, it probably reasonably consistent. Uh, it will tell you with the indentation and the, the way it rings exactly how hard it is. I find this the easiest way to whack. You know, so if you go to a scrap yard and you want to test something, you know, just take along your ball pen and give it a smack and you'll soon know. But anyway, that's it. I hope you found it interesting. It's just a tip for newbies mainly that may not be sure. And I mean, as I said, the hardness is only just one factor of machinability of steel. You know, the actual chemical composition of it is another thing altogether. And I mean, machine grade steel, you know, really nice stuff like 1080 and stuff like that. You know, it's, uh, it'll have similar characteristics to this when you actually test it for hardness. 
Another thing too, watch out for a, this old steel. Like, look at this here. This is a, probably a hundred-year-old stub axle off of an old ops cart. I'm pretty sure it's what it came off of. This steel can be really nasty stuff because a lot of this old steel, they, the chemical composition on it wasn't very flash, you know. They weren't too particular how they made it. They didn't have the, you know, scientific skills in those days to properly formulate this stuff. And a lot of this is forged, and hammer forged, and it will have uh, compression lines in it, uh, fold over lines, all sorts of things. I don't like using this because I've seen work done with this where it's actually um, it's got fatigue cracks in it in a very short time. It's just not really <laughs> very good. So anyway, steels aren't all steels, but when you get them for nothing, they're a steel. Okay, on that little joke, I'll see you next time. Cheers.